Hello, and welcome to the Vital MX pre-game show. This is your one-stop shop for motocross news from around the world. We will be placing a spotlight on the Super Motocross World Championship, MXGP, and other national championships in different corners of the globe. Interesting stuff happens everywhere, and we want to make sure that you, the viewer, are informed. First off, let's look at what happened in the final pre-season race ahead of the 2024 MXGP series. That was held in Lerop, the Netherlands, and Jeffrey Hurlings won with 1-1 scores. Now, you may look at that and say Hurlings went 1-1 in the sand. What's new? But the way in which he did it was magical by all accounts. Jago Gertz had a considerable lead towards the end of the second moto, and Hurlings clicked the on switch, started lapping 5-6 to six seconds a lap faster, and obliterated that. He made the move in the dying stages of the race, and not only that, he set the fastest lap of the race on the very last lap. That is no mean feat in sand as treacherous as Lerop. In fact, most riders will tell you Lerop is even harder than Lommel. Just let that sink in for a second. Hurlings is poised to challenge for his third 450 title. His last came in 2021, of course. And Hurlings is healthy right now. It's important that we stress that because it's rare to actually save those words. If you look at the line graph on screen now, it shows how many rounds Hurlings has competed in each year since he joined the 450 class. To make it easier for you, let me explain that 2017 was the only season he raced every round. And even that year, he entered the season with an injury, he limped through the first five rounds and was really just finding his feet. So, put simply, Hurlings has never made it through a 450 season without some sort of injury. That makes it hard for people to bet on him to win his third title, the 2024 title. But he is still as fast as ever, and when healthy, it would be foolish to say that anyone can beat him straight up. Of course, we will get a look how that works in Patagonia, Argentina this weekend. If you look at the second graph on screen now, it shows total number of 450 wins from the title contenders. This is important because Hurlings has won 103 GPs in his career, number inclusive of both MXGP and MX2. Because that number includes 250 wins, a lot of people want to discredit it. But if you look at that graph that's on screen, he still has more 450 wins than anyone else. Only just, Tim Geyser is nipping at his heels, but still, this is a fact that is often overlooked. As I said, MXGP starts in Patagonia, Argentina this weekend. So tune into MXGP TV to see how that unfolds. Staying in Europe for a moment, the final round of the Super Enduro World Championship was held in Newcastle in the UK. Billy Bolt swept the Triple Crown format to win yet another title and then immediately went under the knife to repair a knee that was badly damaged mid-season. The surgery included repairing a torn ACL and multiple fractures, so considering that, it's a minor miracle that he actually managed to finish the deal in Super Enduro. Bolt will miss the start of Hard Enduro whilst he recovers from that knee injury, of course, he'll probably miss half a season or so. Speaking of injuries, Daytona was not so kind to the 450 SX class. Hunter Lawrence, Dean Wilson, Justin Hill were among those riders who went down hard in the main event. Bad news for Dean Wilson, he broke his shoulder blade in three places, and so he will be out for six to eight weeks. This is, of course, his final season in Monster Energy Supercross, and so the goal is for him to return before the end of the season so he can close this chapter of his career in a pleasant way. No one wants Dean to finish his Monster Energy Supercross career on the sidelines, of course. Justin Hill was landed on by Freddie Noren, and there's no official word on his status yet. He is badly banged up, but it sounds as though he escaped without any serious injuries. And a similar vibe for Hunter Lawrence, who went down hard on his shoulder. He got it evaluated this week, and there are mixed reports some say he's okay, some say he's going to miss some time. So stay tuned to Vital MX for the final word on Hunter Lawrence's status moving forward. 
There was actually an interesting tidbit that emerged from Daytona regarding injuries. If you remember, Cameron McAdoo went down in that first turn crash in Detroit that claimed a lot of the 250 SX East contenders. Well, McAdoo fractured his tibia in that crash, so he's been walking wounded ever since. I personally saw him hobbling through the paddock in Arlington, and I was immediately concerned, thinking there has to be a serious issue there. Well, there is. It's important to put a spotlight on this because that makes his second place in Daytona and his second place in Arlington even more impressive. McAdoo told us after the race that he does have a dedicated plan to making sure his tibia will go the distance. He is, of course, locked into the title battle, as are many other riders. I did some damage to my knee and I have a fracture in my tibia, actually, like in the top of my tibia. And uh, so I beat my knee up pretty bad. And then we had that three week break, which was I needed. What's coming up this weekend? Well, the ninth round of 2024 Monster Energy Supercross will be held in Birmingham, Alabama, a new venue and rain is forecast to batter the venue on Friday night. It's already wet there. There have been some reports that building the track is troublesome, similar to Oakland last year, just because it's already so wet. And so they are building a tamer layout, similar to what we saw in San Francisco for the main events with no whoops or whatever. We'll see how that plays out on Saturday, but the good news is that there is no rain forecast from 8 a.m. on Saturday through to the end of the main event. And as we've seen time and time again with Dirtworks, if it doesn't rain during the event, they are able to salvage a good racetrack. Perhaps this will be more similar to San Diego by the time that we drop the gate. The other 450SX contenders will be chomping at the bit. Jet Lawrence is now sat on a 10-point lead and Mud appears to be his kryptonite. So, this is a golden opportunity for the others to claw back some points. Of course, if it's Muddy and Jet wins, that will just reaffirm his position as the title favourite. We've officially crossed the halfway point in 2024 Monster Energy Supercross. And also round one of 2024 MXGP will be held in Patagonia, Argentina. All of the contenders are healthy there. The only rider missing from the 450 class is Mattia Guardanini, Nastan Husqvarna factory racing's entry, but he should be back as soon as round two. He certainly won't be out for long. The important thing to note here is that Hurlings has won preseason races, Sewer has won preseason races, Geyser has done the same as has Prado. So even Fevra has won motos here and there. So all of those riders are entering Patagonia, Argentina, believing that they are the star. They are the favorite that it is going to be their year. Only one rider can win, and it's rare for us to see all of these titans lock horns because injuries have been prevalent in MXGP. So just that alone is a good reason to tune into the action on MXGP TV. We will, of course, have extensive coverage from both Birmingham and Argentina. If you haven't already, search for our MXGP podcast show. That's done by myself with Adam Wheeler, two journalists who have spent extensive time in the MXGP paddock. We recently released our season preview and there are a lot of fun topics to get into. So if you want more detailed MXGP coverage, look out for that. Thank you for watching the second episode of the Vital MX pregame show. We will be back next week to recap the week that was. In the meantime, stay tuned to Vital MX for all of your motocross and supercross news.